Hello and welcome to this weekly look at the night sky where I go through what you can see and how you can see it. Each week I go through another constellation and tonight we'll have a look at Taurus. So last time I talked about Orion and tonight we're going to use him to find Taurus, also known as the Bull. Most people are familiar with Taurus because it's one of the constellations on the Zodiac, the approximately 12 constellations that the Sun passes through during a year. But few people know what it looks like, how to find it and what actually makes it interesting. So let's fix that. To find the Bull, the easiest way is to find Orion and specifically his belt. If you're in doubt about how to find Orion, I did a video about him last week. We have the belt here, those three stars on a line, and if we follow this line upwards with respect to Orion, we'll soon pass by a fairly bright reddish star. This star is called Aldebaran, and it's the eye of the bull. The rest of the head is then this V shape. Being a bull, it naturally has horns and quite impressive ones at that. We find the two end points of the horns way up here. The rest of the bull is a bit harder to make out. We see its back here, the front legs here, and the belly somewhere around here. And that's it. So really, it's only half a bull. Generally, I'd say there are three categories of constellations. One, the ones that actually look like what they're supposed to be. Two, the ones that require a bit of imagination. And three, the ones that are nearly or entirely impossible to see. They could be nothing or anything. I'd place Taurus in the second category. It's not obviously a bull, but once you see it, and you're told that it's only half a bull, it sort of makes sense. So what makes the bull an interesting constellation? Well, it features two of the most visible open clusters in the night sky. An open cluster is a small collection of stars that were formed together, are still sticking together, but are expected to drift apart as time passes. And if you look to the right of the head, in the stomach if you will, you'll see a small and easily identifiable group of stars. These are the Pleiades, also known as the Seven Sisters and sometimes unofficially as the Mini Dipper. What appears to be about seven stars with the unaided eye is in fact around a thousand brand new stars, younglings, only about a hundred million years old. Now, last week we saw an example of a place where stars are currently being formed, in the Orion Nebula. Once formation of stars stops, because there's no longer enough gas present, this is what you're left with. Their combined gravity keeps them together for now, but there are too few stars for them to stick together forever, and in about 250 million years, they'll probably separate for good. The Pleiades is probably the best known open cluster because it is so obvious, so easy to see and a good target for binoculars and small telescopes. The other open cluster, however, is the closest to Earth and most people, including veteran stargazers, don't realize that it's an open cluster. Do you see it? Right there. Yeah. The head of the bull is actually an open cluster, the nearest one to Earth, only about 150 light years away. It's called the Hyades. It's about 650 million years old and appears to be in the process of dispersing. Aldebaran is not a member of this group, being much closer to us. However, it is interesting in itself. If you saw my video from last week on Orion, you'll know why I find this clearly reddish star interesting. Like all visibly yellow, orange or red stars in the sky, it's in the final stages of its life. However, unlike Betelgeuse in Orion that we looked at last week, this star has low mass, only slightly more than the Sun, 
That means its final stages still takes hundreds of millions of years, so it's not going away anytime soon. That's it for tonight. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, and if you want to see more, click subscribe. I hope to see you next week, and until then, clear skies. Thank you.